Warning, the following audio transmission is based on theory and is intended for entertainment purposes only. Its Doomsday and its affiliates will not be held liable for anything your dumbass does. Listener discretion is advised. second half of the show now welcome in everybody that has came in we're gonna go figure out who everybody is in here real quick we've got a jake jelly ba we've got ozarks angela we have bethy we have kate eric uh we got big daddy al we've got and i also wonder if this is actually updated for me uh rifle just a minute too miss melody w pappy we've got mags beauty and struggle um blade blade in the heart who were you before i don't recognize that name and you've got a pretty high rating in here so i'm wondering who you are um someone here uh ura phxvh american honey mom of two boys mike of tampa bay what's up in mgn uh welcome in everybody if you guys are listening to this episode downloaded online and if you want to partake in this show, if you want to come in and meet some people and partake in the chat here, you guys can do this. We're live every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Podbean. You can get the app in the App Store or Google Play Store. It's absolutely free. And I encourage everybody to come in and start uh, you know, participating in these lives. I know this is not everybody's cup of tea, and I know a lot of listeners of its Doomsday podcast come in solely for the prepping. But in the lives, it goes in a different direction, and I really enjoy them. Um, I really enjoy doing the lives, guys. I really, really do. I do too. Uh, yeah, and so to tear <clears throat> to tear into this a little bit more about like different content creators and stuff like this, I asked Jake to do this, do these lives with me. Jake, th- there is no monetary gain in this for Jake. I, you know, I I couldn't pay him to be here. Um, he did this out of the goodness of his heart. Um, he came came in to participate with us, and I don't know. He's probably you're probably getting sick of it by now, right, Jake? Um, no, I'm not. I, I like to do this stuff. I really do. Um, I, I, I chose to do this show because of you. Oh, is it because you felt bad for me? Nope. It's because I like you and you're a good dude. (laughs) Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I try to, I try to be a good person. It's not always optional. I try really hard though. I really do. Um, crucible man. Welcome in dude. Haven't seen you in a little while. So guys, yeah, I mean, that was, you know, that was kind of one of the big things I wanted to tackle tonight, you know, as you were growing online and social media, how do you, how do you safeguard yourself? How do you know, um, the kind of people you may want to avoid? What kind of situation should make you start feeling uncomfortable? And what are some big red flags you should be watching out for? And one big flat red flag I know that Walt's seen is, um, whenever he saw certain individuals, consistently following them everywhere from platform to platform uh being the first one putting out the most comments you know sending the most dms on every single platform that's when walt was like whoa dude something's something's up here um you know Mm. what what, what's going on and i think Mm -hmm. that's i mean there's like let's be honest there's definitely you're gonna come across some online stalkers here and there right and and guys i know some of this is by happenstance it's not um It's not, I'll give you an example of something that I did that probably makes me look like a stalker. So there's, everybody knows Nate, the homesteader on TikTok. Everybody knows him, right? He's got a ton of, he's got a really big following and it's, you guys know, I I follow him there. Like he doesn't follow me back. I comment on some videos sometimes, this, that, the other. If I see him in a live, I'll stop and I'll say, hi, I'll I'll leave, you know, whatever. Um, But now I find myself following him on Clapper as well because he's over there doing content now. And it's like, well, I gave you a follow there, dude. I want to support you over here, too. So I'm wondering if he's not thinking, well, there's this Doomsday Podcast guy following me over here now. He likes my videos on both platforms. <laughs> um, I, I think that that's, that would be a, a jester concern only. Um, I've mm-hmm. never thought that because I have, 
I have many people who follow me on many different platforms and interact the same. And I don't think anything like that because they're all very nice and it's all very welcomed. As a matter of fact, I appreciate it because they're supporting you, man. Um, let, let them support you. You, you are as excited, as excited as you are to, you know, find somebody that, that you like, that you can appreciate as far as their content. And you go out of your way to go to another platform to follow. And that says a lot about the creator. Um, it, it doesn't make you a stalker. I think that, that makes, that makes you overly cautious and I'm sure you have your reasons and that's totally fine to have those reservations. But in the logical sense, it's not like you're DMing the dude 24 seven or, or whomever, whomever it is. Um, there, there are levels to things, everything in moderation, nothing in excess, right? Right. Yeah. I, th- I think that's a good way to look at it. Um, so what I've, what I've seen was freaking Walt, man, this poor guy. Um, <laughs> I just keep thinking like the listener that like got out of their car, like to go to the gas station and this was running. They came back in and we're talking about this Walt guy and they're like, who the fuck is Walt? I don't understand. Um, stay confused. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, no, but so like there's, I've noticed like he's going through a thing where a ton of DMS on this one platform doesn't get to respond to him. And then all the same DMS coming in on every single platform by a singular person. And it's like, okay, if I haven't got back to you yet on this platform, okay, what, what makes you think that Walt's going to get back to you on this platform? And it's this, it's this, it's becomes this really weird thing. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, so in eight minutes, approximately, we are going to allow Collins to the show. If anybody has anything that they want to, um, say or, or talk about or, or share. Maybe if anybody's had similar stories like this, I'd, I'd love to hear them. I think it would be very cool. I don't, I don't think that at all that that situation is a you problem or has anything to do with you. Um, that has something to do with them and that's a them problem. And the only person who can solve that issue is them. And if they're not addressing it, then they're in a pretty unhealthy space. Right. And then, you know, how does one make the, the, the determination too? and because I mean, this is like another part of this, dude, we, we go down a lot of roads talking about mental health. Like, you know, is this person stable? Um, sure. It, you know, if, if, if you cut ties with this person, are they, are they going to go crazy? Are they going to commit suicide? Like, and is it my job? Or is it Walt's job, I should say, to feel responsible if something bad happens? No, because they, they felt that way before you and they're going to feel that way after you. Right on. Okay. Makes sense. And just a minute two says, nope, it's on them. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I think. I mean, you know, mental health is a person's own responsibility. I've, I've always felt that way, but I also feel that people need a helping hand sometimes. And if you, I feel like if you yeah. see somebody in distress, it, 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 the humanitarian side of me says you need to help that person. You can't yeah. ignore that. Yeah. yeah. But at what expense, you know? Ex- um, yeah. <laughs> again, there, there are levels to everything, you know, um, you don't need to be on the, it's, it's not your job to be somebody's therapist, especially when they're not doing the work that they need to do for themselves in the first place. And they're not all of a sudden a suicidal person just because you didn't message them when they messaged you. They were that way, way before you and before they even knew who you were. And you're just the outlet for, for those issues to manifest in the form of you, if that makes sense. And then when you go away, you are no longer the crutch that helps somebody, um, not deal with their issues. And then once again, they're confronted uh, face to face with their issues because there's nobody entertaining their issues for them. They have to do it themselves and they don't want to be obligated to do so. It's a personal responsibility that they have to be personally, personally liable for. Um, I'm all for helping somebody as long as they're helping themselves. But if they're going to continue to take from me and take from me, I will give chances. Um, but even even I will turn away after after a certain point. Um, if we seem to be having the same conversations over and over again, I feel bad and I feel bad about this thing. And then next week it's I feel bad about the same thing. Okay, let's keep talking about it. Let's keep trying. Let's let's figure out a solution. And those solutions are given, and they're only listened to and not acted upon. That's that's them. 
That's a them issue. They need to act on these things. They need to actively pursue being better, getting healthier or whatever it is. And if they're not doing that, then eventually it gets into this weird situation where you feel like it's your problem, but it's not. Hey preppers, do you want 10% off survival food? Go to www.readywise.com and use code DOOM10 at checkout for 10% off all your survival food needs. Again, that's code DOOM10 at checkout at readywise.com, D-O-O-M-10 for 10% off at readywise.com. I I get you. I fully understand what you're saying. Um, also, welcome in, Ralph. I haven't seen Ralph here in a little while. Thanks for sharing out the show, guys. Or, uh, Ralph, thank you for sharing that out. And, and I get that, man. I understand the idea that you, you have to see somebody progressing in the right direction have to see them putting you know that self-help out there or else it's pointless you know and i did see another uh comment in here from beauty that said you know most of the time it's manipulation to keep you near them i have seen that a lot over the years and Mm -hmm. i don't a lot of like that that was something i seen when i was in high school you know when i was younger um Sure. When you're a teenager, ev- the world's coming to an end 24-7, right? And, sure. And people will definitely make mountains out of molehills in order to keep somebody in their life. Um, and let's be honest, when you're a kid, like the smallest thing's the end of the world to you, right? Mm-hmm. Teenage relationships are the worst. And I just wish I wish I, I wish I had somebody come to me when I was young and say, hey, dude, look, you're you're in this relationship. You're, you're a child, you're eventually going to grow the fuck up and you're going to realize that this was all not worth the heartache and the struggle and, and the fighting to keep this person around that was clearly toxic. And I, sure. I find myself giving my son advice now, um, not relationship advice. I don't want that boy dating yet. <laughs> um, like definitely don't want him dating yet, but I find myself giving him friendship advice saying, dude, look, man, you're, you're out there. You're, you're putting yourself out there for your friends. You're getting yourself in trouble. You're doing a lot of stupid things. And I, you know, and I tell him, dude, these kids that you're friends with now, you're not even going to remember their names in 10 years. Very, very rarely do we take uh, childhood friendships into adulthood. It, it's a rare thing. I got one friend that I talked to, um, that I known since I was a little kid and we barely talk because our friendship just isn't that great anymore. You know, it's basically a phone call once a month just to say, Hey, are you not dead? Are you still alive? Yeah, dude, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then we'll talk about something we're going to do together that we will never do because he doesn't show up. And this is our, this is our friendship now. Haven't seen him since God, 2016, I think. <laughs> So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's just that's just how it is now. That's just how these friendships operate. And I and I tell them, you know, you're not going to remember these kids. You're going to grow up. They're not going to matter. And so, to put all this effort into these like single serving friendships you have now as a kid, don't do it, man. It's not worth it. It's it's not. Um, but again, like you said. Um, you know, to, to him, it is, it is the world because for him, that is his entire world. Right. Um, being cognizant of that and, you know, caring, caring about that, about the issue as the issue, you know, uh, if he's running around with people, you know, like you, like you mentioned, or, you know, get him in trouble or he's doing things to, to keep his friends as his friends and doing stuff he wouldn't normally do by himself. And just, you know, just, just wackadoodle kid, stupid kid stuff. Um, yeah, that's that's your job to be like, look, man, um, these these guys are not worth you getting in trouble. Um, I want better for you. Um, but he genuinely cares about those people, just just like we all did when we were in high school, because our friend circle was our world, because that's all we were doing as kids. Um, so you gotta you have to be a little understanding about that too, and I'm gonna have to be, and I know I'm gonna struggle because I know once you know my kid is upset because a kid doesn't want to be his friend anymore, and it's going to happen. Um, I'm going to know in the back of my mind, it's like, dude, you're not even going to talk to this guy by the time you're 15, it's not going to matter. Right. Um, but also I'm going to be like, man, I'm really sorry. You guys aren't friends anymore. That sucks. Like, are you okay, bud? Um, you know, help him get over it and all of that because he really cares about it. 
he really, really, truly does. Um, and that's cool. But you know, those, those emotions should be directed, um, in a really healthy way. Um, so it doesn't look like, you know, when you say, man, you're not even going to talk to this guy in five years. Um, it just looks, it, it, it's going to feel really, um, it's, it's going to, it's going to hurt your kid's feelings and be like, wow, my dad doesn't even care about my friends sort of thing. Um, no, that's not the case, buddy. Um, that's not the case. Um, I, I care about you and I care what's best for you. And I understand you guys are friends and it sucks and you're hurting. Um, but here's how you deal with it. Um, and a lot of people don't have those role models in their lives. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to speak for anybody or put anything out there. You know, my, my wife was lacking in a lot of role model ways that she really needed growing up. And because she didn't have those tools in her belt at a young age, um, it definitely did not benefit her at an older age. Um, but she didn't know how to handle these things because nobody had ever, had ever demonstrated or shown her. She didn't have anybody to, um, but you know, we, as, as parents, it's hard to lead by example, um, and I kind of look at it that way in my own life too, is you know, everybody knows my stance on, on religion and stuff. Everybody gets that by now. Um, and as, as a father, I know that the issues that my, my sons are going to face are pretty trivial in nature, but to them, it's extremely important. And I'm going to feel the same way as an adult where something's going to seem extremely important to me. And, uh, I know somebody up there is looking down, giggling and being like, man, <laughs> you're going to be looking back on this in like five years. It's not that big of a deal. So I, I think the same thing about myself. Um, <laughs> so it's, it, it you, uh, there, like I said, there, there's, there are levels to everything there. There literally are. Um, there are certain levels to everything. Um, but it's, it's, it's hard to balance the scale. That's, that's the hard part as a parent. It's hard to balance the scale. No, I'm in agreement with you. Just so everybody knows, guys, we are, we are going to start allowing Collins. Um, so I had a really proud father moment the other day. My son, uh, he was getting out of school or actually, no, I was taking him to school the next day in the morning. And he was telling me, he's like, yeah, dad, there was this girl yesterday at school and she has a car. And I was like, well, that's cool. He's like, yeah, she offered me a ride home. And I was like, oh, and he's like, yeah, he's like, well, I told her no, obviously, because I knew you were coming to get me. And I was like, I am just happy you did not get in that car with that girl, because God only knows if that would make me a grandpa in nine months or if you would have got yourself into some serious trouble. But good on you for saying no, because if I was that kid being his age, I would have got in that car. (laughs) <laughs> understandable and i wouldn't have thought i wouldn't have thought twice about it <laughs> i would have been like i would have sent a message hey i got a ride home that's it and i would have that's it i would have been done i would have been gone i see ozark said it too oh i would have been gone <laughs> let it uh let it be a testament of the person you've become then um i th- i'm a really firm believer in uh in believing that you should be able to look back on on your life you know five ten years ago even last year and look at these things and laugh about them and be like, yeah, that was, you know, I would have, I would have been in there. I would have done that. Yeah. I probably would have done that. Um, but that's, that's testament to show you how much you've grown as a person. And that's a good thing. And people who aren't willing to look at those things, um, because of one fear or another, um, to look back on their lives and see how much they've grown. That's, that's a personal issue that they got to figure out. Right. A- absolutely. But man, I'm, I'm telling you, that was just such a proud little moment because it like I'm looking at it and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm saying, thank God you're making better decisions. I did uh, as a young person. Right. Granted, you know, with with everything that's gone on over the years with him, if this was two years ago, he might have gotten in that car. Um, but even to come and tell me like, hey, dad, I had this opportunity that I passed up. I mean, you know, um, <laughs> it's still it's still a really good feeling and it is it it is good to see him making smarter more appropriate decisions um and speaking of of decision making i gotta give it i gotta give a shout out uh to my neighbors here um in the studio because my wife uh (laughs) so i have a neighbor here at the studio and i they they know that that this is a podcast studio they know some of the things i'm doing in here and they're occasionally here while I'm doing the show. 
And they never really asked me what it was about. They never really asked me what I was doing. Well, I guess my wife was down here the other day and spilled the beans to the neighbors and said, oh, he does like a survivalist preparedness podcast. Um, and they said, oh, what's the name of it? That's right up our alley. Cause I guess they're apparently they're preppers, uh, which was fascinating. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> my wife went ahead and she spilled the beans about uh, the show and what the name of it is. And, and so my neighbors could potentially be listening right now. So hi neighbors, um, Hello, neighbors, hope your, hope your evening's going well. And I guess, you know, the woman was talking to my wife. She goes, I don't know what he's in there saying. I can't hear him, but I can hear that he's talking to somebody. And <laughs> Ooh, ominous. it is, it is a bit ominous. So now that now it's like, now they know what's going on behind these closed doors here and behind this wall and the things that we talk about, uh, which is going to be very interesting. So here's what you do to mess with them. So when they next time that comes around and they're looking in the window and they see you talking to nobody, just crack the window and stick your head out and be like, huh? And when they're like, huh? You'd be like, nothing, just talking to the NSA. And then you close the window. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, well, I don't want them to think I'm that crazy. Uh, they, they probably well, that's why already, it's funny. You know, I mean, so anybody that anybody that listens to the show or, or sees my content, they got to think I'm nuts. Like they have to think I'm a little bit out there. I mean, why it, it, it appears to be that way. The, I don't know. The things I talk about, the stuff we get into on the show that like that, it's not normal. <laughs> What's not normal about it? Well, to me, it's normal. Um, but a lot of people I've, I've gotten a lot of. And again, this is why, like, I'm happy to really not be doing much on TikTok. There's a lot of like, oh, you're a nutball comments and there's like oh you're you have this nutball mentality um and because i've had you can people, provide for yourself right i guess i i guess that's you know it's what isn't, it is isn't that what our parents teach us growing up as a kid to learn how to provide for ourselves oh god if only i could put that that man see this is why i like you man you always come out with these nice eloquent eloquent ways to put things that i never have words before <laughs> we never have words for <laughs> It all words for, uh, <laughs> dude. I it's 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 all in very simple terms, man. Look at it like this, okay? Um, you got car insurance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you get into a wreck yesterday? Nope. Did you get into a wreck today? Mm -mm. Are you going to get into one tomorrow? I sure as hell hope not. But if I do, I have insurance. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have a life insurance policy? Yes, I do. Did you die today? No, I can't say I have recently. Okay. What about tomorrow? If, if I do, I'm covered. Oh, really? Yeah. You're a lunatic. Why would you have insurance? What is wrong with you? Well, because I, I want to make sure if I die, my wife can take her new husband on elaborate, awesome vacations. And right, me too. And you want to make sure <laughs> that uh, if something silly would happen, um, look at the four attacks that happened just in Washington on the power grid and shut half the state down. Do you think those people got hungry and cold? Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know, how, how often is that, that, that situation going to arise? Who knows? But once is enough. There you go. So that's all you need is once all you got to be right is right one time. Right. And you're no longer a lunatic. So you're a lunatic until you're not. So let them think that. But if that's the case, you know, my, my retort is always, okay, well, why do you have car insurance? Why do you have life insurance? Why do you save your money? Well, that's just what you do. Okay. Well, I save my food. Isn't that smart? Well, it's just, it's just weird. Why do you not have food in your cupboards? Are you starving your kids? What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, nothing. You, I didn't mean it like that. Well, that's, that's what we're talking about, right? You sound like you don't have any food in the house. Can I help you? I've got plenty. <laughs> Dude, this, it sounds like the same guy you were talking about earlier. I love that voice. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my NPC voice. So if you ever hear me make that voice, that's, that's my voice for the NPCs out there. Um, those are the NPCs are, uh, for the gamer term, it's, it's a video game term for non-playable character. They are, uh, people that give atmosphere to the environment you're currently in, but you can never play as those characters or really interact with them. They're like background extras. Um, those people are never meant to be aware that they're in the game. 
and they never will be aware that they're in the game. So they always just conduct themselves as they're programmed to do. They wake up, they go to work, they feed the dog, they drink the coffee, they read the newspaper, they rush out and ride the bus, do their thing, and then they're tired. And then they go home and sit on their butt and watch TV and do it all over again for 40 years. That's Those are the NPC people. Um, and uh, they're just they're all, they're always meant to do that. That's that's just what some of them do, and that's okay. It's not a it's not a thing I'm making fun of. Um, just some people will never come to that realization. I I totally get what you're saying, one hundred percent. And it, I mean this is and you know this is a similar situation uh, or a conversation I had with my father in law while he was up here for Christmas was you know. And I told you, I think I told you this on the last show, like you don't, he said, you don't have a normal life. You need to live a normal life. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you're out here in the middle of the woods doing this goofy ass shit. And I said, well, to me, this is normal. This isn't goofy. I like this. I, I like what I'm doing. You know, um, actually, we had this conversation on the phone, I think. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So, the, but I mean, he's, he's one of these people, you know, wake up, go to work, make money, come home, TV do it again, do it again, do it again. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I don't want my life to be that. I really enjoy my freedom, right? I really enjoy the ability of not having to be reliant on a certain system. I really, really, really like it. Here's, uh, here's the easy way to change. come to terms with it. Are you happy? Yes, extremely happy. Then you've won. What else I matters? Nothing. If, if you're happy then you're alive and you've won, man. Hell yeah. Absolutely. I wish we had an applause thing like a soundboard, you know? Yeah, like we could do that. But um, dude, if you're happy, you're winning. That's that's all that matters. There it is. You know, we do have one of those. <laughs> we just never use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Applaud no, people's wins, man. Applaud yeah. people's wins. Maybe that should be, maybe that should be my next... Um, Maybe this should be my next conversation with him when he brings this up again. Oh, you know, you suck. You're up here in the woods. I'm happy. That that just needs to be the answer to that conversation. I'm happy. And that should just be the end of it. And uh, Ozark thinks that I'm continually attacking him. But he laughed when I told him I was full of vigor and caffeine and testosterone at the beginning of the show. And now it's coming to fruition. And all of a sudden he feels attacked. You know, like, come on, dude. I warned you. <laughs> hi hi solid welcome in <laughs> welcome in sarah to uh welcome in everybody that's coming in guys we got about 15 minutes left here approximately and we are still allowing Colin. so if anybody wants to jump in and comment on any of this stuff oh there's mags i think mags calling in call in and trauma dump or Ma mags either that or she butt dialed us uh we'll see what happens here hello friends hello what's mags. up mags i just want to let you know that I guess I'm a stalker because I admire you both. And I love everybody in our group. And that's all I have to say. You need Wait, Mags, did you say that you're stalking both of us? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Mags. You're the best. I just want to let you guys know if you need help with anything, I'm here for you guys and to help people in our group. And we got to stick together. I love you. Talk to you later. Absolutely. Love you too, Max. Thanks for calling in. I appreciate you. Okay, Thanks, Max. That's awesome. <laughs> she is the best, man. I, I do love her. Um, I, um, <clears throat> you know, to, to those people who, who attest to my, uh, throughout my entire life of living a quote unquote normal life. Um, if I would have done that, I would have felt very much like office space where I feel like I'm just going through the motions and I end up hating my life. Um, I, I always wanted to, to be very adventurous and try and do new things. And, you know, you can imagine the, uh, the comments in all of the, uh, the, the, the times I got made fun of for, uh, you know, I'm in a small town of less than 30,000 people and everybody knows everybody around here. And I, at a, as a teenager, I was an international model as a male. Can you imagine the comments and the jokes and all of that stuff and, and all the, uh, usual kids stuff that kids would say to that? Um, 
And I didn't give a crap, dude. Um, and a lot of it was envy because kids are envious of things because they don't know how to handle their emotions and have conversations. Um, and I came to a very quick understanding at an early age. And uh, basically what I would do is uh, I'd say, yeah, make your jokes, but I'll show you one of my paychecks and we'll still see if you think it's funny. Um, and then there wasn't much to say after that. And, uh, you know, they can get mad about it, but I, I'm doing what I want to do with my life and I did it and I succeeded and I won. And anybody who doesn't agree with that, it's not up to them because I'm not living my life on their terms. I'm living on my terms. And all of that is, is just a waste of my time and their breath. Gotcha. No, I, I completely understand. I mean, so the, the scene in Zoolander where he returns home to the mines, that's real. <laughs> got the black lung pop. <laughs> well said, Jake. Appreciate it, What's man. Up, huh? What's doing? up, Raccoon? Welcome in, man. I just want to stop by and say, you know, people think I'm crazy. It's so time to do crazy, serious stuff. You know, I get a lot of calls all the time. People say, hey, man, uh, my, my, plumbing stopped up and I can't get a plumber. Can you come over and help me? And I go over and take care of it for them. Or they have something that they don't understand and they call me up all hours of the day and night. Say, hey man, I'm working on this and I can't figure out what it is. And I'll sit down with them for 20 minutes and they'll come up with a solution that they can work with and get their job done. You know, it's hell being old. <laughs> oh no, I, I, I get it. <laughs> Yeah. No, but no, and, and I know uh, a, a lot of people. I raccoon. I I get it. I I understand. Um, <laughs> to simply to simply move on from that. So how 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 you doing, man? How have you been? I'm doing pretty good. I just celebrated my 67th circle around the sun. Well, happy birthday, man! Yeah, yeah. We had another birthday here recently too. Mags just had a birthday. And someone else just had a birthday. Safe Prep had a birthday. I don't think he's in here, though, but he also had a birthday. Yeah. Um, maybe miss it. There's a lot of birthdays this month. Um, my wife's birthday is coming up this month, and I still don't know what I'm doing with her yet. Um, well, I found out something early in my marriage. If you want to remember your wife's birthday, just forget about it one time. <laughs> God. I, I bring uh, it up every time after that. <laughs> Listen, well, she, she did, she, she brought it up and I was like, yeah, I knew your birthday's coming up. Like, what do you want to do? Like, I'm trying to figure out, you know, getting a sitter or, or what exactly we're going to do. And I don't have answers for any of these things yet. So she needs to let me know what she wants so I could plan accordingly. Um, but I, but I did screw up this year and forget our anniversary. I did, I did do that. Um, but I think she forgot it too. So it was like, it was a win-win. Uh, she forgot and I forgot. So nobody bought anybody anything and nobody was mad. So it was like, ah, we both forgot the good, the good, no problem. <laughs> yeah. T time flies when you get older, you know, those days come up so quick. Sometimes you don't even realize you passed it by three or four days. It oh, like, no. Uh, yeah. That's staring at you. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, what did you forget to do this month? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> celebrate our anniversary. Oh, shit. Well, we'll try again next year. Um, That's how that'll go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, I goes around says, to it. I got a whole bunch of round to it. I mean, right. a bag full of them. People say, I'll get around to it. I hand them around to it. I say, okay, get with it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Raccoon, just uh, just real quick, because we got about 12 minutes left here. Yeah. If you uh, if you got any advice, because Raccoon, you, I've heard you on a lot of shows. We've we've done some shows together, and I know that there's a lot of a lot of people probably think you're a little bit on the on the crazy side. How do you combat these people? I just make them mad, make them walk away in disgust. I mean, it doesn't bother me a bit if people hate me or like me, you know. I mean, I just don't let it bother me. I, I never have. I mean, you know, when I was a little kid, I was rejected by a lot of people. And they're just like, okay, fine. But, you know, people come back around, especially when they figure out that you're not the person they thought you were, you know. I think you're crazy or something. And when they need something or some information from you or, or how show you how to do something. And then, uh, you know, they become your friends again. Hey preppers. Do you want 10% off survival food? 
Go to www.readywise.com and use code DOOM10 at checkout for 10% off all your survival food needs. Again, that's code DOOM10 at checkout at readywise.com, D-O-O-M-10 for 10% off at readywise.com. But they come back around. It happens to me all the time. I mean, so I, basically I just, when they need you. Yeah, well, it's, it's when they need me. But yeah, you know, but the thing of it is, is I can make friends. I can stop on some on the road and talk to somebody, and it's either going to go good or it's going to go bad. You know, they'll get mad and walk away, or they'll they'll sit there and have a healthy conversation and talk about things. I do that with people that fly through here they're they're basically going from town to town and they're homeless and stuff and so i invite them to go get something to eat or give them a couple bucks and you know help them out with whatever i've got on hand but you know people don't realize we're supposed to be here on this earth to help each other not take care of each other but help each other it's one thing to have somebody in need that you can help and it's another thing to have somebody who always comes around because they're too lazy to go out and figure out how to do it themselves like find food get a job or whatever but you know we use our own discernment i got you makes sense um raccoon i appreciate you calling in man guys uh, for everybody else we got about nine minutes left so if anybody else wants to jump in the call panel for this uh, short period of time that we have left, I'd appreciate it. I'm sure somebody's got something on their mind they want to they want to say or they want to talk about. And if not, that's okay. Uh, I'll just hang out with Jake. That's fine too, man. That's what it's about. <laughs> the fellowship. <laughs> yes, and no. I mean, granted, I, I mean we we haven't been allowing a lot of call-ins lately uh, through the actual portion of the show. I've been trying to save them to the end. Just because I, I found it getting very um, confusing, um, trying to keep up with everything that's going on. And later, I got to go back and edit these and get these uploaded. So it's this this has been a little bit easier the process. But this doesn't mean I don't want Collins, right? Um, just so everybody's aware on that. Um, no word on whether Beans and Weenies is doing shows this week. Actually, so Eric, since you bring that up, I um, got a message from Spanky. And he was supposed to call me, I believe, yesterday or the day before, but he didn't. Um, I think what's going to happen is shows are going to be Friday nights, 9 p.m., I think is is how this is going to go from here on out. But this is just through a brief text message I got. And I'm like, okay, call me. I need more information. And he never did. So I'm waiting. I'm still waiting on him to give me a call and let me know. Um, Speaking of beans, go check my beans out, guys. Yes, actually, go check out Jake's Beans. Wait, hold on. We might have something for that in here. Uh, oh, yes. Hold on. Let me see here. Wait, 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 wait. That, that beautiful ad. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Can I say that? Yeah, roll that. Well, I don't see why not. I don't think that's patented, is it? <laughs> I don't know, and it doesn't exist anymore, so I don't see why not. Here we go. Hey, preppers, are you looking for good coffee? Go to www.beardedbeancoffeecompany.com. With over 42 different varieties of coffee, you'll find what you like. Why not use code DOOM15 at checkout for 15% off your coffee order? Again, that's DOOM15, D-O-O-M-15, for 15% off your order at beardedbeancoffeecompany.com. Grab life by the beans. Nice. (laughs) It's the bass tones. It just, every time I hear it, I'm like, ooh. Okay. So is it, it's over 42 varieties now though, right? 50. I know. I got to redo that ad. Shit. That's all right. (laughs) There's dude. I am not even trying to sell anything. I I'm not a salesperson. If you want it, get it. Cool. If not cool. Um, there's like one that I'm super excited about and I'm going to buy it tonight actually is whiskey aged. Um, is it's, it's aged 30 days in a whiskey barrel. Ooh. It's a Guatemalan blend that's stuck in a whiskey barrel. Ooh. So, okay, now, because I, I don't know how coffee works. How does, so these beans are aged in the barrel before the roasting? For 30 days. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of whiskey barrels? That says a lot. Um, I'm going to have to look for sure. Uh, but it said whiskey aged, and I was like, okay, I'm sold already. No, I got to tell you, uh, 
and I'm going to tell this to everybody out there, and I hate to say this because I'm such a big Jack Daniels fan. I've had Jack Daniels coffee. I'll never do it again. Um, it was it was absolutely horrible, uh, and I hate to bash Jack Daniels um, because I I have things going on with Jack Daniels. But guys, if you see that coffee on the shelf, avoid it because it's not good. Um, a lot, my wife did. A lot like of places that. do that, man, and they they get the generic stuff because they're getting so much of an influx. They're not getting the best stuff. Um, <laughs> my advantage: all my stuff's triple A rated. You can't go any higher. There's nothing above triple A. There's nothing above triple A. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go on the website. This is on the website now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm gonna go look here, see if I can find it on your website because I'm probably gonna order that too. Um, because I'm really inclined to try it. And is it just available in bag or K cup as well? It's just the bags. Uh, K cup is just like the house blend. For now. Gotcha. The website looks really cool, by the way. If you guys haven't seen uh, Jake's new and improved updated website, definitely go check this out. Dude, I spent all weekend working on this thing. I looked at it, and I was like, I need to bring this thing to life and add some. You cut out on me, Jake. Are you still with me, or did I lose you? Did you hear all that? I have that? no idea what happened. I oh, there, there you are. Yeah, you're back now. Oh, no, I, I said I, uh, I, I kind of took a note from MySpace back in the day when you had a top five. And uh, I, I put a little music player on, on the website. So when you go to the homepage, it plays whatever music. But it's, it's one of my songs that I made. It's very, very cool, guys. Definitely go check out the website. Definitely order your, you guys some coffee. Um, when Mags was in town, I hooked her up with some of it. Um, yeah. I can't find the damn the new one. The, I'll look the new, for it. The yeah, new the, one, what? The new coffee, the new whiskey aged barrel coffee. Oh, hang on, I'll find it for you. Before this show ends, I'll drop it right in here. We've got about five more minutes, um, That's and then we're out of here. Uh, for those of you guys that are listening to this episode online, once again, I encourage everybody to download the Podbean app. And come in and join us in these live shows. If you have suggestions for episodes, email us. It's doomsdaypodcast at gmail.com. And if you want to be a guest on the show, again, email. It's doomsdaypodcast at gmail.com. And one more time for good measure, the email. It's doomsdaypodcast at gmail.com. Guys, we uh, definitely put, uh, I put a lot of time into in, into keeping the show going. And we're definitely trying to grow that audience. Share this with your friends. Share this with your your family members. If you know somebody who is in the prepper survivalist community and you say, huh, they might like this show. I should share this with them. Do it. And one more time, Ozark sneezed the email. It's it's doomsday podcast at (laughs) gmail.com. I don't know why it's not in there. And I'm going to make sure it is before uh, by the time the show is done. See, the the whole time you're thinking, I don't know how to work a website. I didn't say that. (laughs) <laughs> you were thinking it. I didn't say anything. Um. Oh yeah. So also yeah, a couple uh, show plugs in here that Eric's throwing out. Uh, guys, you guys all know Big Daddy Prep. If you guys listen to the show downloaded, you know who Al is. You know who Big Daddy Prep is. So guys, he also does a show on Podbean as well, live. And if if you're not downloading the uh, Podbean app to potentially come in here to listen to its Doomsday podcast, remember Al's over here too. Um, along with Cody Kane, uh, the lovely Mrs. Dials is on there a lot. Um, AKA Jake's wife is off limits. Dirt uh, lady. <laughs> I love how I'm trying to be all fancy about this. And you're like, Oh yeah, the dirt lady. She's, she's an angel of a woman. I'd tell you what, you know, I just an absolute angel, not in the biblical sense with all the eyeballs, but like, you know, in the people sense. Oh, she only has two eyeballs. She only has two eyeballs. She doesn't have like 500 eyeballs. Gotcha. Very interesting. So, guys, Jake, we have less than a minute left, but uh, if, you, if anything you want to say to take our listeners out of here with, uh, say it now or forever hold your peace. Um, I appreciate everybody. I really, truly do. Um, you're not a burden. Um, 
I I'm happy to, to talk to the people that I do, and I'm glad that you guys reach out and trust me with all of that all of that stuff. I will not betray your trust. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself, guys. And once again, if you're listening online, share the show to help it grow. Uh, We will catch you guys next Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be here. Have a great night, everybody. Later. This is an emergency action message. At approximately 1 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Nora is tracking 15 ICBM nuclear missiles inbound to the following cities. Orlando, Miami, Pittsburgh, Dover, Newark, Richland, Philadelphia, New York City, Baltimore, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Boston, Seattle, Detroit. This is an extremely deadly situation. Stay tuned, the next emergency message will be a presidential address.